What's up guys? Hello. We are, beside us is our telescope that we've been using long since before we started this channel. It's our first one and still our only one today. We've got some, such great images from this new, rather cheap Newtonian that we just never felt the need to upgrade. At least not yet. So we're making a video today, more of a review video, um, because we had people trying to ask us if we should recommend this cup or not. And uh, the answer is... Yes. And you don't have the way to land in the video for that. But let's weigh the positives and negatives of this telescope. All right, let's do it. F3.9 Orion Newtonian Astrograph Reflector Telescope was our very first telescope purchase and we do not regret it one bit. To this day, we still use the same telescope to capture the deep sky objects seen in our gallery. This is our honest, straight to the point review about this affordable telescope. At f3.9, the Orion Astrograph is one of the fastest telescopes that you can find that is quite affordable. But what does that mean? It means that your telescope, as well as your camera, can gather light much faster compared to other instruments that have a higher f number. This is an important feature for astrophotographers, especially those like us who cannot image from our home, because the faster the focal ratio is, the less time you need to spend on each target. However, there is a small downside to this, which we will discuss in another section. Here is an example of what we meant by fast. This is a single shot of 6 minutes on the Veil Nebula. It is quite impressive. Another is the Helix Nebula, taken over 3 minutes. Here is an example of 30 seconds on the Orion Nebula. Seeing a great image like that appear on your camera really makes you wonder how spectacular the stacked image will be. When we were able to purchase a complete astrophotography setup, we spent a long time trying to decide on which size we wanted our telescope to be. The 10-inch version of this astrograph was an enticing upgrade at only a couple hundred dollars more, but we decided to go with the 8-inch instead. Our reasoning was that although the 10 inch would have allowed us to better photograph smaller and fainter objects, including planets, we would have not been able to fit beginner targets in our frame unless doing a mosaic. Knowing that we would become more knowledgeable over time, it seemed like the best fit for us to start out with the 8 inch and get a real handle on what we wanted to accomplish. This 8 inch astrograph has a focal length of 800 millimeters which is perfect for framing large targets like M31, M42, or M45. How heavy is the 8-inch astrograph? With a 30-inch long optical tube made of steel, this reflector weighs about 17.5 pounds with no accessories attached. We never thought it to be too heavy, and its weight has never been an issue during installation. Here's what comes in the box with the telescope. First, the telescope itself, a 9x50 finder scope, a cooling accelerator fan with battery pack, two tube rings, a 2 inch and 1.25 inch extension adapter for eyepieces, the Starry Night Special Edition astronomy software, the instruction manual, and a collimation cap. So this is where you put the finder scope or the guiding scope. 
and it's very easy to place so you can take them out easily with no problem. All it works is with just one screw. The 9x50 Finderscope that comes in the box is, in our opinion, good quality and it has many positive reviews online. We have tried several types of Finderscopes to compare but in the end we never felt the need to upgrade from this one. Here is the fan, this is where it just is attached and if you have to turn it on just plug the battery right here, that's it. This piece of equipment can be very useful, especially if you live in a hot place like the desert where the temperature of your home is much cooler than the temperature outside. It is good advice to use the fan for about 30 minutes prior to imaging. The focuser that comes with the telescope is probably the best we could hope for. It is the dual speed 2 inch Crayford focuser and allows you to achieve extremely accurate and smooth focus using the precision knob. It also has a screw to lock the focus, which is helpful when doing astrophotography for hours. With a back focus of 69mm, we have never had to use any adapter or extension for our camera. Let's put astrophotography aside for a second and talk about observing with this astrograph. Firstly, the telescope does not come with an eyepiece, so we purchased a cheap Plossel 25mm eyepiece which has about the same field of view as our camera viewfinder. We expected deep sky objects to be difficult to see or look very faint, but we were pleasantly surprised. Of course, it cannot beat the amount of details that you'll get with a good Dobsonian, but its visual capabilities are impressive for a telescope mainly made for photography. Even planets look great by using a more powerful eyepiece and a Barlow. Whoa, see it looks like an eyeball, isn't that crazy? Yeah. If you see right next to it on the side, there's a little white dot. That's one of the moons. I, I see a moon! Oh How can it move? Which mount should you get for this telescope? First of all, our telescope weighs 17.5 pounds. We had planned to get the Sirius EQG mount, which can hold up to 30 pounds, but we decided to go with the Atlas EQG, which can hold up to 40 pounds. Yeah, we thought about the likeliness of having a heavier scope in the future, and uh, the Sirius mount is cheaper, but that one is safer. Although a cheap mount like the Sirius EQG could support this telescope and track perfectly, we recommend you spend the extra three to five hundred dollars to get a stronger one. This astrograph only weighs 17.5 pounds, but this number goes up pretty quick when attaching our guiding scope, the guiding camera, and our heavy Canon 7D Mark II camera. We also feel good knowing that this mount could support a bigger and heavier telescope if we decide to upgrade in the future. The negatives. First, comma. Having such a fast focal ratio, your images will likely have comma around the edges, just like in this example. This can easily be fixed by attaching a comma corrector between the telescope and the T-ring on your camera. Second, collimation. You will need to collimate the telescope every single time. That does not bother us whatsoever, because when it comes to astrophotography, we would double or triple check that our collimation is perfect, even if we had a scope that does not require it often. We made a quick video on how to collimate your telescope using a laser. Check it out for help if you're unsure about how to collimate. Third and lastly, no case. This probably does not deserve to be in the negatives considering the affordable price of the telescope, but it is here nonetheless. Some telescopes when purchased come with a carrying case. This telescope did not. So you will either need to get your own protective case or make a second function out of something else, like padding extra luggage as we have done. Although we do it this way, 
we highly recommend purchasing a case. Our final verdict. The Orion 8-inch astrograph is perfect for anyone looking to buy their first telescope for imaging. If, like us, the price of your equipment has to stay under a budget, you most likely will not have to worry about upgrading your telescope for years. Let us know if you like this kind of review. We'd love to do more even though this is the only equipment that we have. And if you want to see our full gallery, um, go to galactic-hunter.com and you will see also images taken with this guy. Alright, so see you next time and clear skies! Honestly, it will never cease to impress you, no matter the target you point at. To conclude our review, we absolutely recommend this telescope 100%. And we will continue capturing the beauty of the night sky with it.